The study focused on the efficacy of pulse transcranial photobiomodulation on cognition and behavior in early to moderate dementia patients. The objective was to evaluate both the feasibility and efficacy of repetitive self-administered transcranial 1070 nanometer pulsed infrared light on cognitive functioning in older adults that were diagnosed with mild to moderate dementia. This was a double-blind placebo-controlled multi-site trial conducted in Pennsylvania and at Texas with subjects between 50 and 85. The study active and control arms used the same transcranial infrared helmet with the control arm sham treatment being the same except that the lights were not on. The uh, treatment was done twice daily for six minutes uh, over eight weeks. The assessments were both quantitative EEG measures along with the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative Neuropsych Battery. The results were that 96 subjects completed the trial with no adverse events reported in either cohort. The um, minimal exam difference was significant, two standard deviations between active and control, and the clock drawings test showed a 70% significant difference between active and placebo. The slow wave amplitudes in the quantitative EEG significantly decreased, which is consistent with neurologist's findings regarding the progression of dementia and slow wave amplitude increasing. The um, Neuropsychological measures identified significant improvements in the waist digit symbol substitution test and also digit span forward and backward in logical memory. There are also reports of sleep duration and quality improving after eight days of treatment and with increased EEG activity within the sensory motor parietal and left occipital regions. This correlates with improvements in both attention short and long-term memory, cognition, and sleep reported by the patients and their caregivers. This finding is significant because slow wave disruptions are associated with neurophysiological degeneration related to dementia. The uh, study did not adequately account for traumatic brain injury, nor were we able to complete all the QEVGs in either the Texas or the Philadelphia area because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Zalman Key, uh, William Brubaker, Kristen Williams, and Fernando Cavallo for their assistance in the preparation of this presentation.